Hi everybody. First, thank you so much for all your support and your feedback and suggestions. Thank you. Keep the suggestions coming. Normally the improvements happen on an ongoing basis and we post about them in the Facebook group. Um, this update is a bit more significant and that's why uh, we wanted to sort of walk you through the changes because we've redesigned the menu system. So let's see what's new. If you launch the app, you can click start beating. And now instead of having to open the last project you were working on by going to, to load the project, you've got an option to open a new project, load one from before, or continue the one you were working on last time. So let's do that and it, it just opens up. So hopefully that will be a bit more convenient for you if you're working on the same project over multiple sessions. Um, let's go back to the menu system. New project and edit project menus are as they were before, uh, maybe a little bit more beautiful. You can see that now instead of having the menu across the top and tabs, it's down the side. My projects is a little bit different. So now there are two views. There's thumbnail view, which lets you see all the images of your projects, and list view. And this gives you all the information. So rather than having them combined into one view setting, we split them. One great new feature is that you can select multiple files and delete them in one go, which is great um, if you're like me and you have lots of untitled or test projects, you can batch delete them now. So we're excited about that. Um, this means open. So if I wanted to open any of these projects, I could click on the button and, and launch it. Let's click frog. Now it opens it like that. Go back and then this downloads the file. You can see open, save, um, and then here's all the information about it. If I want to change the name of any of these, like I, I see a typo there, I can simply uh, edit the names like this. So hopefully this will make it easier to, to work with your files and manage information about them. You can see that it's wanting me to back up my work. Please, please back up your work regularly. Uh, it's good to have copies of all your projects just in case anything happens to them. And as before, you have the option to upload a project from a file that you've got, load a project from a code, and back up your files in one go. I've switched project to show you the changes in the palette menu. Let's go to the palette menu. And here it is. Um, as before, you can click auto assign symbols to all styles, and now the symbols are assigned automatically. However, before, if you messed up the symbols and changed the order of the swatches, for example, I'll do that now. This is A, we'll put A down here. There's a whole number of reasons why you might want to play around with the ordering of the swatches. Maybe you want to rename them. Shift click, and that opens the edit swatch. Let's say I want to rename that. P for some reason, let's say you do a whole bunch to the palette and then you go back and the symbols are all messed up, before you'd have to click on them and change them manually like this. And you still can do that, but now if you click auto assign symbols to all styles, it resets them. Once you've finished designing and you've got a palette you like, you can just click auto assign symbols to all styles and you're good to go. We've got a few exciting improvements to the Match Styles to Library button. And if you haven't seen the palette overview video, you might want to watch that. The Match Styles to Library button takes any generic colors that the program's generated. So for example, this was a, an image that I transferred from a photograph. And you can see that the colors are just generic colors that the program generated. If I want to find the closest matches to actual bead products, I'll click Match Styles to Library, and now it's matched it to the closest uh, colors. Now, if I like what's here, and you can see now they've all got products assigned to them. If I like it, great. It used to be that you couldn't undo it, and now we've, we've enabled the Undo and Redo buttons. So, so if you don't like the auto conversion, you can change it back, and now they are generic colors again. Also, it used to be that when you match styles to the library, 
it would delete any unused swatches or any swatches that have zero beads. Um, now it doesn't do that. It will leave those unused colors in so you've got them if you want them. Another really exciting new feature is that you can take one of your saved palettes and then set it as a default palette. And I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to show you that if you go to a new project and launch it, you get the default beadographer palette. And that's fine if you want to just open and play around. But if you're a paid member and you've got saved palettes and a bunch of beads that you use a lot, then you don't want to have to delete this and, and load in your palette every time you use it. Now, if I go back to the palette menu and save this, this is a palette that I use all the time. You might have seen it a lot. Palette set is default. That means that when I open a new project, my default palette is this one, and I can start designing with that. If I want to go back and reset, I can clear the default palette, and now the beadographer default palette is back, or I can save a different palette as the default. So I'm very, very excited about that one. The settings menu hasn't changed it as it was. Now let's talk about exports. If you haven't already seen the video about how to set up PDF exports, uh, you might want to watch that video. This table is full of the building blocks. This is the content that's going to be in your PDF. And then these, uh, which we've split now into different tabs, are further specifications. So let's talk about the tabs. The panels, I hope this is a little clearer than it was before. This is for people that are working on larger projects like tapestries that might want to be beading in different panels. And so you can set your panel width and it will give the word charts and the color charts in different panels if that's how you want to bead them. This splitting it into panels is separate from the number of beads that are going to be displayed on a page in the color chart. So now you can choose to use the small diagram, which means that we'll squish 50 beads onto a page. And I know for some of you, uh, this is important if you've got, a, a, say, a pen wrap that's 46 beads wide. Um, <laughs> I know you were having trouble fitting them onto one page before. Now you can use a small diagram and it will fit it all on one page for you. Otherwise, we've done what we think is more legible, which is 30 beads across on a page, and that's the maximum. As before, you can choose your starting bead. A recent development is to choose whether or not you alternate the row direction in the word chart. So, for example, if you're doing a loom project and you do not want to alternate the direction and have the word chart go back and forth, um, you can untick the box and now all the, the word chart will go in one direction. Also, I've changed projects again. If I've set this up as a tubular peyote project, um, you can now tick the tubular peyote box and it doesn't matter if it's even count, odd count, this should generate a word chart for you that will include the step up if you need it, if, you, if you're doing even count, it will include the step up or not if you're doing odd count. So that's exciting. It will do that automatically. Images. Um, this one doesn't show up in the table, even though it is a, a kind of building block. And that's because the header image will always go in the top right corner. However, my images, it's a little bit easier. I'm going to pop this down. You can select multiple images at once, open that up, now it says two files selected, and your images will come automatically into the table. So now I can drag them around to be where I want them. And it should make it a lot more convenient for uploading many images at once if you need them and putting them where you want them. Now, text. We've gotten lots of requests for templates so that you don't have to put in the same information again and again between exporting PDFs. We don't have templates, but we have come up with a solution that I think is even better, which is that this is some custom text that you can put in that stays constant 
uh, between your sessions. So let's say I want copyright Leah Russell 2021 on all of my PDFs. I'd only have to put it in once, and now I add it as a part of the, the table here, and it pops up there so I can put it anywhere I want to by dragging this bar. Um, I can change it. Uh, so these are just some, some pieces that you can add to the table that will be there for you whenever you need them. The footer text does not appear in the table, and that is because it will show up on every page, at the bottom of every page anyway. So that's not going to show up in the table, um, but the custom text will. You can see that if you add more fields, then it will become available to you in the, in the drop-down here. There you go. So, let us know what you think about that, if that's working for you. Um, finally, the page tab, as I mentioned, this changes the size of the color chart so you can get it all on one page if you want to. And then, as before, you can choose your paper size, letter A4. Finally, the help tab, this hasn't changed. Um, we've got YouTube tutorials, there's a user guide, um, join the common room if you haven't. Uh, please post your questions there. Thank you for your support and let us know if you have any problems and let us know what your thoughts are.